Hello everybody, so this is uh, part two of our talk on uh, tailoring metal hydride drive for practical application. In this uh, talk, we will, uh, we will see the effect of reducing the chrysalid size on the hydrogen storage capacity, and also we will see uh, the use of uh, other techniques to obtain a nanostructure. So first, uh, let me talk about uh, iron titanium alloy. This is an old and a well-known alloy. This was discovered as metal hydride in the 1970s. It could absorb temperature uh, hydrogen at room temperature, but uh, the first hydrogenation, what we call activation, is very difficult. So you even if the alloy could store at absorb hydrogen at room temperature, uh, usually the first act, the first hydrogenation you have to go to high temperature like uh, 450 degrees C in vacuum. After that you anneal at a certain pressure like seven bar. You cool to uh, room temperature and then you go at high pressure and you do that a couple of times. So it's a lengthy and a complicated process. So what will be ideal will be to be able to uh, do the activation, the first hydrogenation directly at room temperature under uh, low pressure. So how you could do that? Well, you could uh, substitute some element. Usually people are substituting on iron. So they replace iron by other elem transition elements, for example, manganese. And uh, then you could have a first hydrogenation that is quite quick, okay? But the way the, the, when you do that, you could change the thermodynamics and the capacity. So that's not the ideal way. Uh, or you could add some other element or add an alloy, another alloy, and have like a nanocomposite. Or you could uh, get a nanostructure. So this is what we will see in this talk. So the work that I'm showing you is the ball milling of iron titanium with some addition of zirconium. And that work was done in collaboration with uh, Sabrina Sartori of the University of Oslo. So again, uh, here we add four weight percent uh, of zirconium to make the alloy easy to activate. We know that, but we would like to know what is the effect of ball milling. So how this compare with ball milling? So we cast the alloy by arc melting and then we mill it on a specs machine, a high energy milling machine and we mill for 5, 15, 30, and 60 minutes. And also we try cryo milling, so milling at low temperature, but this time it was in air. All this milling here was done in argon, but the milling at low temperature was done in air. And we will see that this, this made some problem. So this is a morphology of our powder after uh, ball milling. Uh, so this is uh, as cast. So we cast the sample and then we just crush it with a mortar and a pestle. And uh, you have this big chunk of uh, iron titanium. And then we ball mill it for five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. 60 minutes and this is cryo mill. So you see that after just five minutes of uh, ball milling, you have a, a huge reduction of particle size. But after, if you continue to mill for 15 minutes, you see that you have agglomeration of smaller particles. And this agglomeration will continue for 30 minutes and even 60 minutes. And now you see that 
all these particles are agglomeration of the small particle that you see here. And so you don't see any small particle anymore because you have agglomeration of all of that. And for uh, cryomel, you see that the particles are very small, but we think it's because it was milling air and you have a lot of formation of oxide and it prevents agglomeration and it, it makes the, the decrypitation of the particle. So this is the uh, X-ray diffraction pattern. So this is the as cast. You have iron titanium and also a little bit of iron to titanium. And when you mail, you see the peak are getting broadened uh, because it's getting a nanocrystalline structure, but we don't have formation of any new phase. So you see the crystallite size uh, as cast is uh, 23 and ball mill five minutes we already reduce it by a factor of two and it continue to uh, to uh, to be reduced and here for 15 minutes of cryo mill we have about 15 nanometers uh, this is bigger than this because this milling machine is not as energetic as uh, the specs machine the machine that we do, we use for milling at room temperature so that, that's why this crystallite size is bigger than this one because they are taking on different machine. So this is the first hydrogenation at room temperature and under 45 bar of hydrogen. So you see this is the as cast here and you see it activate and takes about uh, two hours and a half to fully uh, absorb hydrogen. If we try OML for 15 minutes, you see that the sample is totally dead. It's because we we mill under our, uh, on in air, and then we have formation of oxide. And as you as we saw in part one, uh, in order to to hydrogenate the hydrogen has to go through the oxide uh, layer, and here the oxide was probably too thick and it was impossible. So uh, in the future, we will do this uh, experiment again, but under argon, and then we're confident that uh, the sample will then absorb hydrogen. But uh, for milling under, uh, in, at room temperature, you see that this is uh, five minutes and 15 minutes, 30 minutes and 60 minutes. And you see that as the milling time is getting uh, bigger. Uh, the, the the kinetic is getting faster. So you have a faster kinetic, longer milling time give you faster kinetic, but you see that the capacity is getting down. So kinetic is getting better, but capacity is getting uh, um, worse. So how could you explain that? So here we took, uh, we plot, so this is the hydrogen capacity as uh, was measured as a function of milling time. And you see that the capacity is going down. And uh, here this is the chrysalid size, again, as a function of milling time. And you see that the, the chrysalid size is also decreasing and it looks similar. So probably these two are related. So this is what we will see in the next uh, slide. So if you consider that the chrysalid again, from uh, the first part, we saw that the chrysalid is the coherent domain, the crystallographic coherent domain. And uh, so in order to break that, that coherency, all you need is one unit cell that is not coherent with the unit cell that is beside it. Uh, so that's more or less the the small the, the the thinner grain boundary you could have is to have one unit cell that doesn't match uh, the unit cell beside it. So in the in for iron titanium, uh, the unit cell is a three angstrom. So the uh, 
the, we assume that the grain boundary is 0.3 nanometers. And uh, then if we assume that the chrysalids are spherical, and of course the chrysalid that uh, we, um, we measure by X-ray is an average, okay? But uh, we assume that all the particles are at this average. And um, we, uh, we assume that all of them has, have the same uh, grain boundary thickness, okay? And then we could calculate the, uh, the volume of that grain boundary compared to the total volume of the particle. So this is a very simple equation. So on first order, this is three times, that's the thickness of the grain boundary, and that's the radius of the, of the, of the crystallite. Okay, so if you do that, you see that if you express the, the volume of the grain boundary over the total volume, these are uh, with respect to the crystallite size, so these are the number, and that's the capacity, the hydrogen capacity loss that we measured. And you see that these numbers are very close to these numbers. So it looks like the, the loss of capacity is scaling exactly as the volume, the total volume of the grain boundary. So then we could explain the loss of, of capacity. So when you create a, a new, boundary, new grain boundary, this acts as an hydrogen path, as we saw in the first part. So this means that it's fast kinetics because now you have more grain boundary, so you have more path for hydrogen to go into your, uh, your crystallite. But the grain boundary give a fast diffusion, but it could not store hydrogen. So hydrogen is going through the grain boundary, but doesn't stay there. So you have a loss of capacity. And of course, the more grain boundary you have, the, the, the less capacity you will have. So, and you see that for iron titanium, this scale perfectly well, but I have to tell that this loss of capacity depends on the system. So for some alloy, this loss could be minimal because when you, when you hydrogenate, dehydrogenate, you may recreate uh, uh, a, um, a currency, okay? So your crystallite size may, may increase a little bit because uh, the, the hydrogen will force, you know, the, the, the unit cell that is on the grain boundary to adopt the same, to get coherent with the unit cell beside it. So this loss of capacity with the, the grain boundary is not true for all system, okay? But for some system, we see that it, it scales very well. So the other uh, aspect that I would like to see uh, in this talk is the other method to obtain a nanostructure. So in the field of metal hydride, we have a couple of methods that are widely used by the researcher. Uh, maybe the one that is mainly used is equal channel angular pressing. So I will not go into detail, but here you have a piston, you have a die, and there is an angle in the die. So you take your sample, so this is your sample, and you push it through the die, so it has to go through this angle. And then by going through this angle, it will sustain a lot of strain. And uh, so, uh, so you, 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 you could get a, a highly strained material, and also you could get nanocrystalline structure that way. Uh, the advantage is that uh, depending on, uh, because you could do that, you're, you could repeat that many times, and depending on how you push back the, the, the sample, 
if you rotate it uh, 90 degree or 180 degree uh, you could induce the formation in different plane so this is interesting because I, according to the crystal structure of your material you could say well i would like to induce the deformation mainly in that plane and not in that other plane so from a fundamental point of view this is quite interesting uh, the disadvantage is that the bulk the bulk sample has to be filed so after you process that you have uh, so typically this dimension is maybe one centimeter so you have a block of one centimeter by one centimeter by maybe a couple of centimeter uh, long and uh, you have to file uh, this block so you more or less you modify your uh, your uh, your sample by doing that so uh, you end you some other deformation by just filing or by reducing in powder and also this could be difficult to scale up uh, the other uh, technique that is more and more used now is high pressure torsion so here your sample is a thin disc that you put between two anvil and you uh, you rotate it you rotate the anvil and you press on it very hard so uh, the advantage is you have a very high strain so th maybe this is the technique that you have the highest strain but the disadvantage is you you have a very small sample so maybe it's one centimeter of uh, diameter by maybe one millimeter of thickness so your sample is very very small and finally we have a code rolling so the advantage of that it's a well-known technique and i think it's very easy to scale because uh, the industry is doing a lot of cold rolling uh, the disadvantage is usually you have to use a plate but uh, in our case uh, we solved this problem because we took the cold rolling machine and we rotated 90 degrees so then we could uh, process powder because usually our material our metal hydride is in form of powder and not plate so the 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 example that i will show you today is uh, uh lantern on nickel five so cold rolling of uh, lantern on nickel five so we took commercial lantern on nickel five we roll it in air and after rolling we do the first hydrogenation the activation at 50 degree and 15 bar and the desorption was also done at 50 degree and five kilopascal and the theoretical capacity of lanthanum nickel 5 is about 1.5 percent and uh, again i have to stress that the cold rolling was done in the air and we compare that with ball milling because ball milling is used by everybody and everybody knows what this ball milling is doing to to metal hydride so we use a high energy mill and the milling was done in argon contrary to here that was done in air and we mill for 15 and uh, 60 minutes so this is a morphology so we after so the as receive one is a like big block so this is 50 micron so this is almost 100 micron so you have big particle and uh, when you cold roll basically what you do you take all these particle and you make a small plate with it okay so you see that uh, uh, the and then we took this plate after we're rolling once we take the plate we fold it in two and we roll again so at after each rolling we have a reduction of 50 percent of our uh, of our plate okay so um uh, so this is after 5 12 and 25 row and you see the morphology of the plate do not change so much but of course we will have reduction of chrysalid size and a strain because uh, we are every time after every row we reduce the the, the thickness of that plate by 50 percent and this is ball mill 15 minutes so you see as we saw previously you have agglomeration of smaller particle here 
and after 60 minutes you more or less you take these particles and you break them again so you see the particles are smaller and you have even smaller particle here okay so this is the first hydrogenation the activation at 50 degree and one and 15 bar so this is the as received so you see the as received it's very difficult it's it takes forever to uh, to activate and if you boil mill 15 minutes you see that it's very fast you it's uh, uh, that the sample is taking hydrogen right away okay but you have a loss of capacity here okay and uh, but if you boil mill more if you boil mill 60 minutes you see that you have a reduction of capacity and the sample is almost dead again it's even worse than uh, than the as cast but uh, if you do cold rolling you see five times cold rolling uh, it's quite fast not as fast as uh, as ball milling but you see we have almost full capacity and if we roll 12 time or 25 time you see that 12 time actually it's getting a little bit slower the incubation time is longer but we all we have almost no loss of capacity but if we keep cold rolling we have a loss of capacity because uh, again we we do every, all of that in air so as we roll we will start to produce uh, oxide and to make oxide and then it will reduce the capacity so this is the desorption so you see that uh, this is the desorption of the, of the as receive and this is the ball mill uh, 15 minutes so it's quite fast and that's the ball mill of 60 minutes it's slow but what is interesting is that all of them the ball mill 15 minutes and all the cold rolling they are all of them have more or less the same kinetic they just the the, the only difference is the the capacity but they all have the same kinetic so the point is after one one uh, one cycle they almost have all the same capacity the the same kinetics and this is what you see on the second absorption okay so on the second absorption you see that all of them are absorbing at the same same rate so the difficulty is the first uh, the first hydrogenation then you have a difference of of uh, kinetic between all of the all, all of them but after the first hydrogenation and this is a common example for uh, many metal metal hydride after after the activation then the kinetic is the same the only thing that the that is uh, different is the capacity so this is the uh, diffraction pattern so as receive cold roll five times 12 times 25 and ball mill and you see that 15 minutes of ball mill the peak are already quite broad compared to five cold roll the peak are broader but not so much okay so nano the ball milling is much more efficient to reduce into uh, a nano crystalline structure and you see it here so as synthesized so this is as received it's 50 uh, this is a uh, nanometer so 50 nanometer and ball milling 15 minutes you reduce that by a factor almost a factor of 10 so it's 6.9 and 60 minutes you go down to 5 nanometer while for the cold roll you see it's 21 nanometer and then 12 and then 9 so you have a reduction of chrysalid size but not as important as for the ball milling okay and this is after two cycle of hydrogenation so you see that even for the as receive the uh, the crystallic size will reduce in this case because of the decrepitation of your material but uh, you see here you go from 21 to 16 
so you have a reduction but here you have an increase okay and here it's more or less constant but it doesn't absorb hydrogen so much but so you see that it looks like you have like a like a natural size of crystallite after cycling it will tend to have like a, a certain size of crystallite okay so uh, so the conclusion for the lantern nickel 5 is that uh, cold rolling sample present a faster activation despite having similar crystallite size than ball milling so the point that i want to give you here is that nanocrystalline is important for uh, kinetics and for activation but it's not the only the only parameter okay some uh, some other characteristic also have an effect on the uh, hydrogenation uh, kinetics okay so cold rolling five time at the highest reversible capacity and the shortest incubation time of all the cold roll sample uh, for ball milling if you ball mill for too long it has a detrimental effect so it's not good to ball mill for too long and to try to reduce the chrysalide size at a very very small uh, sometimes it's better to have a chrysalide size that is a little bit bigger but you will still have faster kinetic uh, up to now the exact reason for activation and enhancement with cold rolling is still unclear to us but it's known that cold rolling increase the number of high angle grain boundary but in our case it still has to be proved we still have to do some experiment about that so in conclusion of that course i hope i show you that uh, metal hydride attractive material for hydrogen storage but we need more development we need to reduce the cost to get better capacity and also to improve the cycling uh, nanocrystallinity is a good way to improve the kinetic but it has an impact on capacity and uh, we saw that many techniques could be used to get a nanocrystalline structure so with this i will end my course i would like to thank you for your attention and um, I hope uh, I hope uh, you will uh, have a better understanding of uh, metal hydride now. Thank you very much. Bye bye.